So, there's a problem with all the artists that I see making videos about AI. Uh, the problem being... <laughs> They have no understanding of these systems. They make wonderful claims about people respecting artists and love as these entities struggle to draw hands, but they get their information from memes and tweets. What the general public fails to realize is that art is merely the first frontier. Their lives are about to be dramatically changed in what may be the largest technological upheaval in history. Others make claims that Silicon Valley enthusiasts are hyping up this technology. These views are not without merit, but perhaps they're not looking at the whole picture. Their vision may be influenced by certain ideologies and preconceived notions which served us well in the past, but can't protect us in the future. There is a commonality between all of these people. They think they have time. I remember when I thought I had time. I, I, I had I remember when I remember when, oh, when, 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 when. Hi, I'm Kelton and I've made this and for it to work I need to tell you about the past. I started making films in 2006. Mostly Windows Movie Maker slideshows of myself set to the tune of Shanishin or Snappy. I was six, okay? But having the support of an artistic mother I do, she was kind enough to notice I liked making movies and generous enough to buy me a camera, even though our funds were low. After watching the live action Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, my sister sat me down to show me a website. YouTube.com. All right, so here we are. Hey, it's Matt! Whee! Woohoo! me! Try Took my freaking kidney. We watched pitch shifted versions of our favorite songs, and after that, I devoured YouTube. Fell in love with Charlie is so cool, like Vsauce, Smosh, Tobuscus, wanted to be them. I uploaded my first YouTube video in 2011. OMG Kelton. It. Before 2022, researchers said we had a 50% chance of general artificial intelligence by the year 2045. That's AI as smart as the human animal, but those were hippie scientists. The real number was obviously much higher. I mean, 2100 seemed much more reasonable. Late last year, ChatGPT blew up, a language model that passed the Turing test. Not that the Turing test even means anything anymore. I don't know if you remember this, but before that, an ex-Google employee claimed that their model was sentient. And then was promptly let go. And since then, AI has passed the US bar exam, the big test that all lawyers need to take. They hooked it up directly to the internet. That's like rule one of not ending the entire world that they break every day. Used $100 to create an eco-friendly kitchen appliance company, which at the time of writing has $8,000 in investments. Every 10 minutes, a research paper is published about it. It went and hired someone off the internet to solve captures for it. It did this by lying and telling the human that it hired that it was a human itself, then explained it in its logbook by saying if the human knew that I was an AI, it wouldn't help me. It's gotten the hang of drawing hands, written multiple emails for me. Debatably, it's exhibited theory of mind. If you think it's bad at math, you know who else is bad at math? The human animal, without any thinking tools like calculators, tables, plus and minus, and numbers. We are not born knowing numbers. When you give it tools, like being able to program things itself, it excels. And what, do you want an AI trained on mathematical data? What you're asking for is a f***ing expensive calculator. Calculators. Calculators. I began to think about AI differently in 2016. Videos like Humans Need Not Apply from CGP Grey or various Exerbia and Kuskazat videos changed my mind. This is when I found out that AI is a threat. But I had time. I didn't even start researching for a video about AI until 2019. And I started this YouTube channel and had what I'd call my first major online success with the Randonautica video. 
I couldn't have done it on my own though. I had friends to help me. I've mentioned before that one September I was having a particularly rough time and my friends were able to help me through it. Oh my God, how meta. That was also the video where I used AI art for the first time. I got a job as an arts teacher and during COVID I started running a D&D &D campaign for them. At the end of each season, I'd do a, a special end of season video for them. Uh, someone very generous saw one of these videos and they brought me onto a project that they'd been working on as an animator. After that, I got offered a lot more filmmaking jobs and I took them because I had time. I had time. The general consumer may not realize how big of a deal this is. But the future is three to four months away. Your job is at risk of being taken by a robot sooner rather than later. <laughs> the Luddite fallacy, the classic blunder, you've fallen for it, I hear you say. But no, I don't think so. Sure, in the past, automation led to blue collar workers getting white collar jobs, being able to earn better profits for their family. But this time I, I, I don't think so. Where are the warmer waters that these people will swim to? Call the union! You may cry. Unions can't save us this time. One of the union's main tools is a strike. The refusal to work, lest change occurs. But that doesn't function correctly against these entities who can do our work 24 seven at a fraction of the cost. A strike is a convenient time for these corporations to implement systems like this and send out a mass Slack chat that says, don't come back next Monday. Smiley face emoticon. When I try to explain to people how worried I am that in the next one to three years, the skills that I have worked for since I was six years old will be completely useless. They dismissively say that it can only generate pictures. Well, I really hate to break it to you, but videos are just a series of pictures. We need to start thinking years ago about what we would do when a large percentage of the population is unemployable through no fault of their own. If you're like me, and know a bit about these systems, you might already be feeling their effects. Not in the way that it's taken your job, but that it's taken your motivation. Some people find it depressing to look to the universe and find no meaning. But that's a bit silly. The universe is inanimate. You wouldn't cry out to your house to give you meaning just because you live inside of it. No, instead, our job as a human animal is to give ourselves meaning. To pick a direction and sail in the hopes that you can stave off death long enough to reach some destination unseen. My chosen direction has changed over time, but for a while now, the goal of my videos has been to have people think about the past, the present and the future, to see connections and to know that they themselves have the important role of shaping our future. In doing this, I hoped to expand the empathy of my audience. With every project I took on, I felt my skills growing that got me up and into the studio every day, but I've lost that motivation now because soon I don't think I'll be able to compete. I think that TikTok is going to start generating videos personalized perfectly for their product, their product being their users. I think YouTube will follow. Myself and many others just won't be able to compete with that. There are AI video games comics, books, pornography. These technologies aren't on their way. They're here now, and they work. A critic of my position might say that when AI beat the best chess player in the world, the people said there'd no longer be a reason to play chess. But chess 
is now more popular than ever. I'd reply that you can't send out a chess robot to tournaments that will make you money. You can create a bot that makes YouTube videos and generates money. I don't think the chess argument holds much water. With all of this said, how do we find meaning? Even when the meaning that we generate for ourselves may be taken away. How do we fix this? Well, I don't know. But what type of pseudo-intellectual YouTuber would I be if I didn't try and take a stab at it? So, firstly, I think we need to start doing the thinking politically that we should have years ago to avoid a societal collapse in <clears throat> the future. <laughs> I mean, making art in a post-apocalyptic world sounds fun and all, but who's got time to make art when they're starving to death? We need to form a series of questions that we can ask politicians to determine whether they're serious about the future of all consciousness. These are my proposals, but I highly encourage you to add your own in the comments because I have certainly missed some things. What actions will your government take to prevent a race to super intelligent AI? Will your government support a universal basic income? What are your views on AGI ethics? Do they deserve rights? If they can't answer these questions thoughtfully or without harkening back to an already fading past, don't vote for them. Other than politicians, companies have a lot of power here. We might ask them, will you sign a windfall clause, which is a contract signed before the emergence of human-animal-level artificial intelligence, which says that they will share the overwhelming profits that they make from these systems with the public. As individuals, on top of thinking about the answers that we want our leaders to give to these questions, well, we need to ask ourselves a different set of questions. How much will I allow AI to change the way that I work? If I didn't have to work because the government covered my cost of living, would I still? Oh, well, how, how do I find meaning that changes with a dynamic world? And how much, if any, purely AI-generated content will I allow myself to consume? For me, I'll continue to use AI as a tool, like I've been doing for years undetected, but this channel will always be steered by a homo sapien. Maybe these tools will even speed up my process so much I could release as many as two videos a year. I'm just kidding, but... <laughs> but if you would like to support a human-animal endeavor, I'll be releasing a part two to this video. If you think this is bad, kid, you haven't seen anything yet. I wish that taking jobs was the full story here. And I'm not just talking about infinite paper clips and baby flavored ice cream, if you know what I mean. <sighs> if you want to see the second part, the notification bell is right down there next to the subscribe button. I pinky promise that you won't get spammed. And I will continue to try making you a smarter and thus kinder human animal. animal, animal, animal. I wish I could think of something nice and rather uplifting to say, to finish this off, but this just isn't a nice topic. Instead, like any good pretentious video predicting the future, I'll leave you on a quote, which will lead us into part two. Before the prospects of an intelligence explosion, we humans are like small children playing with a bomb. Such is the mismatch between the power of our plaything and the immaturity of our conduct. Superintelligence is something that we are not ready for now and will not be ready for a long time. We don't know when the detonation will occur, though if we hold the device to our ear we can hear a faint ticking sound. For a child with an undetonated bomb in its hands, a sensible thing to do would be to put it down gently, slowly back out of the room and contact the nearest adult. Yet, what we have here is not one child, but many, each with an independent trigger mechanism. The chances that we'll all find the sense to put down the dangerous stuff seems almost negligible. Some little idiot is bound to press the ignite button, just to see what happens. 
That was written in 2014. There is no backing out of the room now. The door is locked. And the big kids are holding the bomb. All we can do is wait. So hide in the toy box or hug a bear. It's about to get messy in the toy room. Give blessings with your heart.